I literally just had to change the camera angle to get all the hair in the frame. Hello and welcome to Spinster's Library. I'm Claudia and this is the culture of my people. In today's Victorian Halloween special, I want to show you a terrifying children's picture book from 1845, which was used to educate and teach German children discipline as late as my own childhood. I present to you Der Struvelpeter by Heinrich Hoffmann. Before we get into this, I am aware that this book is not technically Victorian because it was published in Germany rather than the British Isles. But let's ignore that for now and focus on the truly horrible tales that are within these very pages. Bit of background, this book, uh, which was actually translated into English by Mark Twain and published under the title Slovenly Peter, was originally written for the author's three-year-old son as a Christmas present. Clearly, Dad had a weird sense of humour. This book is written in verse with lots of colourful illustrations detailing exactly the painful and horrible things that can happen to children who misbehave. Fun stuff! So gather round, children, and let me show you exactly what will happen if you don't listen and behave. Behold the cautionary tale of Peter, who refused to brush his hair and cut his nails for a whole year. Although his punishment seems to be that he just looks a bit silly. I woke up like this. Next up, the dreadful tale of Friedrich, who beats up and terrifies animals and humans alike. Only to have his leg mauled by a dog, though kind of serves him right. But other children don't get away quite that easily. Young Paulinchen, who plays with matches against her parents' orders, gets burnt to a crisp until just her slippers remain. This illustration of the two cats crying in front of a pile of ashes that used to be a girl is possibly my favourite illustration in the entire book. Let me introduce you to Kasper, a boy who was a picky eater and refused to have his soup for dinner until four days later he starved to death. His parents, seeing the funny side in things, then decide to put the bowl of soup on top of his grave. Take that, Kasper. The really fun thing about these stories is that if you grew up in Germany, you have at least once been compared to one of the characters in this book. I personally was called Hans Kuck in die Luft at least once a week from ages 3 to 13. Literally, Hans who gazes into the air. This boy does not pay attention to where he walks because he's constantly daydreaming. So of course he must be punished. And he ends up falling into the river, where well, luckily he is rescued by some passers-by. He gets away with his life, which is more than most kids in this book. I have read about this book on English language websites, and the thing they always fail to mention is how deeply ingrained this book still is in today's German culture. If you say to a child that they're being a Zappel Philipp or a Zuppenkasper, they know what that means. In fact, many of the terms coined by this book were used in pedagogical circles for a really long time until the discovery of medical diagnoses like ADHD, anorexia and autism spectrum disorders. However, the use of this as a book to teach children has been outdated for, I would say, well over a century. And yet, this was on my nursery bookshelf in the 1990s, right between The Very Hungry Caterpillar and The Rainbow Fish. This was one of the very first books I ever read as an innocent four-year-old Hans Kuck in die Luft. I'm pretty sure at that age I found the stories funny rather than scary, and the moral lessons about good behaviour clearly didn't get through to me. So I don't think this has done me personally any harm. Still, a bit inappropriate to have that on the bookshelf for any child to read without further explanation. My mum, who's a nursery teacher herself, very much disapproved of this book, so I never had my own copy until I found it in a charity shop as an adult. Nowadays, I keep it around because I very much enjoy the shocked look on British people's faces when I tell them that this is how Germans educate their children. 
So let me know if you grew up in a German speaking country, if you've ever been compared to one of these characters. And if you're a parent, would you be upset to find this in your child's school library? And thank you for letting me indulge in a bit of creepy childhood nostalgia. I hope you have a good Halloween, whatever you do. And if you're short of a costume, you might consider dressing up as Struwwelpeter on the cover. All you need is a red smog and a hell of a lot of hairspray. Thank you for watching. Bye. I just tried to film this without my glasses on so I could look a little bit more like this dude, but I couldn't read the script, so... You're getting Struwwelpeter the Nerd Edition.